Welcome to this WiseL tutorial in Report Builder 2016. In this video, we'll take a quick look at creating table headers, footers, and totals. We'll begin with a quick look at inserting rows to create a table header row, and talk about merging cells to make your header span the entire width of a table. We'll then explain how to insert footer rows, avoiding accidentally inserting rows inside the details group, and then explain how simple it is to create a basic column total using the sum function. We'll mention how you can choose other aggregate functions such as count and average. And then just to finish off the video, we'll have a quick chat about how you can format large numbers to make them readable. So let's get started. To get started, I've created a brand new blank report and I'll begin by creating a new data source which points to the YSL Movies database. If you don't already have a copy of that, we have a video which explains how to install it, and there's a link in the description of that video to get hold of a script to make that work. So assuming that you've got to that point, let's add a data source which connects to that database. If I right-click data sources and choose to add a data source. From previous videos, you may still have a shared movies data source, which you're welcome to use. If not, you can create a new one very quickly by typing in a new data source name, choosing to use a connection that's embedded in the report, click the build button, type in the name of your server, dot backslash SQL 2016 training in my case, and then select your database name from the drop down list at the bottom, in this case, movies. We've covered this in far more detail in previous videos, which is why I'm just skipping over the basics just for now. I can click OK a couple of times, and then having created the data source, I can right click on it, and then choose to add a data set which uses it. I can call this data set, I'll call it films. And then from the query designer, I will choose a few fields from the film table. So I can expand the tables folder, expand the film table, and we'll choose to have the title, the runtime minutes, the budget and box office, and finally the Oscar wins. Having done that, we can click OK, click OK again, and there's our basic data set created. Next, I'll remove the default title text box by right clicking and choosing delete. And then I can right click and choose to insert a new table and then begin assigning fields to that table. So let's have the title field added to the first column and then the runtime minutes. Then let's have the Oscar wins. I can then begin clicking and dragging the remaining fields from the report data window. So I can drag the budget dollars column and then drag the box office dollars column and make sure that those get attached to the end of the table. Don't go too far to the right, otherwise it won't attach itself to the table. Make sure you can see this blue vertical line. Having done that, I'll just alter the column with a little bit, give the report a quick test and make sure everything looks sensible. And there we go, there's our basic set of data to work with. What I'd like to do next is insert a title text box for the entire table which sits just above the column headers. To make that work, let's head back to the design view. And then if we click into any single cell within the table, that exposes the row selector buttons, these gray boxes which appear to the left hand side. I want to insert a new row which sits above the current list of titles. So let's right click on the gray box next to the header row and choose to insert a new row above. When that's happened, I can select all of the cells in that row by clicking and dragging, or as you've seen in previous videos, I can select the first cell in the row and then hold down the shift key on the keyboard and click in the last cell in the row. I can then choose to merge those cells either by clicking the merge tool on the toolbar, or I can right click on one of the selected cells and choose merge cells from that menu there. Having done that, I can type in a quick title. Let's call this movie list and then once I've selected or once I've clicked away from that text box, I can select it again and apply some basic formatting. So let's center the text in that cell and then let's perhaps apply a different background color to the cell. Let's go for some sort of dark blue color and then we can go for a lighter font color and maybe make the font bold and increase the font size as well. Finally, I'll just increase the row height to deal with the extra uh, the, the increased font size as well, so I can read things a little more clearly. And there's our basic header cell created. 
The advantage of creating a header cell like this in a table, rather than just using the default text box that appears in the report when you first create it, is that this header cell will change its width based on the width of the table. If I decide to increase the width of the title column, for instance, the header cell increases in width likewise. If I inserted more columns or deleted columns from the table, the header cell will change its width to match. None of that would happen if I just used a basic text box sitting in the report, so it is worthwhile going to this extra effort to, uh, to create your own table header. Just to complete the header section, I'd like to apply some basic formatting to the column header row. I'd also like to modify some of the column headers themselves. So let's start by getting rid of the word dollars from the budget dollars header. And then likewise for box office, let's change that just so it's uh, not box office dollars, it's just box office. Runtime minutes, I just want that to say runtime. And then I'd like to just modify the formatting of that row. So I can select the row by clicking the grey box to the left hand side. And then I can use the same tools on the toolbar to change the formatting. Let's go for a lighter blue colour and maybe make the font bold as well to make those stand out. Now I'd like to create a footer row in the table that allows me to show things like the total, average, min and max of various numeric fields. Inserting a footer row is a little trickier than inserting a header row. If you remember, we right clicked on the existing column headers, chose to insert a row and then just selected above. To insert a row for a footer, I've got to insert that below my details item. And because this is a details item, you can see hopefully again these three horizontal bars that appear on the grey box there. When I right click and choose to insert a row, I have several more choices. So I can choose to insert rows either inside or outside a group, and then either above or below. One of those choices is fairly obvious, I suppose. We know that we want the footer to appear at the bottom of the table, so we want to insert our new row below the one I've right clicked on. Inside or outside a group is a slightly trickier choice. The context of a group depends on what it is you right clicked on on a table. In this case, the group is the detail item I've just selected. If I choose to insert a row inside the group below, what you should see is that the new row that appears has the same three horizontal bars on it that the original row does. This indicates that this data row or this details row will be repeated for every single row in the data set that's currently displayed. So if I run the report, what I'm going to see is a blank row between each individual fill name, which isn't quite what I wanted. I just want one single footer row right at the end of the entire table. Back into the design view, I can delete a row in a table easily enough by right clicking on its grey selector and choosing to delete the row. This time I can right click on the grey box next to the details row again and choose to insert a row, this time outside the group below. This time you can hopefully see again that this grey box does not contain the three horizontal bar symbol. This indicates that it's not a detail row so it will only appear once for that table. If I run the report again, I'll have to scroll all the way to the very end of the list to see the results. I can do that quickly by clicking on the last page button up here. And then I can see this new blank row right at the very end. Now I'd like to add totals to each of the four numeric columns, a runtime, Oscar wins, budget and box office. That's fairly simple to do back in the design view. If I hover the mouse over a cell in the footer row, in fact, if I click into a cell in the table so you can see which row I'm working with, you'll see if I hover a mouse, my mouse over the cell, I get the same field selector button as I do in the details row. The difference is when I select the runtime minutes field in the footer row, because it can't show me each individual runtime minutes, it automatically applies a sum function to it. You might just be able to make that out in the cell there, sum runtime minutes. I can simply go along the row then and do the same thing for the Oscar wins. I'll get sum. I'll also get the sum for the budget and the sum for the box office. One field I won't get the sum for is the title field. Because the title field is text, if I attempted to choose the title field in the footer row, it doesn't apply any function to it. One thing you might consider doing for the title is count how many there are. If I want to apply a specific function to the field I've selected, I can click onto the text which represents that field name, so make sure it gets highlighted in blue. I can then right click on that and choose to summarize by any of the standard aggregate functions. So here I'm going to go with the count function. 
If I then click away from the table and I choose to run that, I can navigate to the very last page of the report by clicking the last button. And now we can see the count of all the films, the total runtime, total Oscars, total budget and total box office. Now there's nothing to stop you from including both a total and an average and a min and a max. You can have as many footer rows in a table as you like. Let's switch back to the design view and I'm going to click back into a cell in the table. This time I'm going to right click on the grey selector next to the existing footer row. If I right click and choose insert row, I go back to my basic choices either above or below. Because this row doesn't belong to a group, I don't have to choose whether it's inside or outside. So I can choose simply below, that gives me another blank row. I can go through then and select the runtime minutes field again. This time I get the sum again, but I want the average, so I can click onto the word sum, see the text highlighted in blue. I can right click, choose summarize by, and then switch to an average instead. I can do a similar thing for the Oscar wins, select the field, click on the text, right click, summarize by average, and then tediously for budget dollars. And then finally, if I've got the average for budget dollars, finally for box office dollars as well. So select the text, right click, summarize by average. It might be worthwhile indicating that these are sums and averages or totals and averages. So let's remove the count of title from that cell by selecting the text and deleting it. And then I'm going to type in the word total. And then in the next cell, I'm going to type in the word average. Having done that, I can click away from those cells, run the report again, look at the last page, and now I have my averages in there as well. One thing you'll almost certainly want to do for the aggregate values you've calculated is apply some kind of formatting to make them readable. So for example, for our averages, we might want to reduce the number of decimal places, perhaps down to two. For the total budget and total box office, you might consider showing those with commas separating the units of thousands, or even displaying them in millions or billions instead. We can do all of this in the design view using some various number formatting properties. Let's start by reducing the decimal places for our averages. Back in the design view, if we want to use the format cells dialog box, you may remember from previous videos, we can only do this for one cell at a time. So if I were to right click on the average runtime minutes text box and choose text box properties, I can head to the number tab and then choose to format this as a number with just two decimal places. If I click OK at that point, what I should see is that in the properties window on the right hand side, if I scroll down far enough, I can find the number format property and find that it's created a very basic number format for me that shows each number with two decimal places. Rather than going one by one through each of these other text boxes, what I could do is copy this number format from the average runtime minutes. Then I can select the three remaining cells on that row and then find the number format property in the properties window again, and then just paste that format in. Having done that, if I run the report again, if I skip to the last page, I can see that all of my numbers on that row have been formatted with two decimal places. I can use a similar approach to make the budget and box office values a little more readable. Although we've reduced the number of decimal places, the, the values are so high that they're still a little unreadable. So we can do a couple of things here. We could either use commas to separate the units of thousands, or we could display the numbers in units of millions or even billions. Let's change this so that we can see the budget and box office numbers in units of millions with uh, maybe a currency symbol as well. Back in the design view, I'm going to start again by selecting one of those cells containing a budget or box office aggregate. I'll go for the sum of budget dollars. Having done that, I can right click and choose to view the text box properties dialog. And then in the number page of the dialog box, I can go to the currency option. I can choose to view two decimal places with thousand separators. I can choose to show the values in millions. 
And I'm also going to change the currency symbol uh, It's using the regional settings of my computer here. So rather than viewing it in pounds, I'm going to choose to show uh, United States dollars. So if I can find the dollar symbol, there it is. And then I can find the United States, English United States is what I was looking for. There it is. Not that it really matters. It doesn't do any conversions or anything fancy like that. I just like to have the correct one. There we go. So having done that, if I were to click OK, and then just have a look for what that's done to that specific number. If I run the report, go to the last page, I can show that number now as a much more readable value. The problem is there's no indication that that's in millions. Uh, so what I would like to do as well is add in a letter M at the end that indicates it's in millions of dollars. To do that, I can go back to the design view and now I've got to do this manually. There's no quick, simple option I can use on the dialog box to make this work. So I can do this in several places. I could go back to the text box properties dialog box. Alternatively, I can just select that cell and then scroll down the properties window to find the format property. If I just zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on here, hopefully. Right at the very end of the number format, uh, at the positive part of the number format, you might be able to make out this semicolon character which separates the positive number format from the negative number format. Really, in this case, I'm only going to be formatting positive numbers, so it doesn't matter too much about everything after the semicolon. In fact, if you really wanted to, you could remove that part entirely. So just to make things a little simpler, let's do that. All I need to do now is write the letter M. Literal text and other characters should really be written in single quotes in a number format. So I type in a set of single quotes followed by the letter M. What I can now do is run the report just to check that that number makes sense. First of all, if I go to the last page, I should be able to see the letter M has appeared. And if that looks the way that I want it, I can now copy that number format to the other cells in that little group. Back into the design view, select the sum of budget dollars, and then scroll down to the number format property, select that text, copy it, then I can select the other three cells. The easiest way to do it is actually to select all four cells in that group and then paste in the number format into the format uh, property of the properties window. Having done that, I can run the report one more time back to the last page. And there we go. Those numbers are now just that little bit more readable. The last thing I'd like to do in this little section is just apply some basic formatting to make these two rows stand out. If I switch back to the design view, I'm going to highlight the total and average row headers and then just apply some basic number formatting. I'll go for the same dark blue background color and the white font color and the bold text. And then for all of the aggregates themselves, I'm going to use the same sort of pale blue background color as I used in the header row for each column header. Having done that, if I switch back to run the report, scroll to the very last page with the last button, that makes things just that little bit more readable. OK, so there's some basic information about how to set up simple headers and footers in a table. There are several other techniques we can use for headers and footers, including making your headers appear at the top of each page and creating scrolling headers. But we'll cover those in later videos in the series. For now, thanks for watching. See you next time.